pretty small update today, but I am fleshing out this nice triangle. I'll show you some details up here. Uh, so on the, on the end here, I'll build another little sloping uh, that comes out flush here. And those two one inch boards will be seamed with a, with a bead mold. But you can see my transition is in a perfect triangle and there'll be a couple little leading boards that come out on the ridge of the uh, false, uh, the false ridge brackets. I'll uh, take you up top here. Here you can see I got a little piece of aspenite tied in. So you can see it's nice and flush. And of course I have did all my fasteners from up top here so that I don't have anything underneath. There's no fastener showing from underneath. Uh, I still want to do my foam insulation in here before I put the sheathing on. I still have to cut the other two boards that uh, uh, connect this ridge and uh, I'm almost ready to put the sheathing on. Looks pretty good. Love it. Knife edge roof line. Isn't that neat? Looks fantastic. So I'll probably screw the aspenite into this into this dado. But uh, uh, I'm pretty happy. I got the result I was after. A perfect knife edge roof. Love it. Thanks for watching. So this is the time to add the roof ventilation. It's far easier than normal construction. A normal construction would not do this. You would buy these crappy little sixteenth of an inch foamy things, okay? So a lot of people have gone to spray foam to have a tighter roof. But this roof I want to be ventilated. So what we've done here is we've, we've placed our foam wind barrier against the plate. So it's isolating the plate from here and it drops down below if you want to take a look down here it drops down below and you can see that it's covering the majority of the plate and the crown molding hides that so that 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 double plate at the top which usually isn't isolated is now isolated okay and that's an r10 now how i'm fixing that is pretty simple i cut this little channel and that just gets stapled in the bottom and it's and it's oriented in this fashion so that when I cut that on the 45 for both the roof pitch that when I slide that in it locks down inside there now, now, you know that sounds pretty and there it is that's locked in uh, we'll put some little blocks here okay because now we're outside of the building envelope insulation envelope the next step is that the, is to add the um, the foam isolation for the vent and that'll be accomplished with one inch foam sitting on top of that. And we'll extend this foam to about the center here where we're gonna put our vent holes. And then we'll attach this foam to the side of the rafter. And this cavity now will have an inch and a half air space. The important thing about this detail here is that wind can no can, can't loft the bat insulation. And if the roof leaks, it's going to run down this plastic into the roof fence. So if you're, you know, uh, this is a great technique. It also uses natural ventilation. And so this is an asphalt roof. We have air ventilation against the roof. This allows the cooling system not to compete with insulation that's right up against and fighting that. Natural convections will take the heat away. So I'll only build this section at this point to here. We'll run our mechanical and then that will continue on up. And then we'll build down and there'll be a reflective foil on the interior. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. So I'm working on the corner of part of the roof that projects near the tower. And the tower is on a seven degree slope or a one and a half and a 12. And I actually have to cut the corner of the roof out so that it the two pieces don't touch each other and so what I'm going to doing is I'm just constructing that corner in solid material and shaving it it's just easier to figure out those projections so right now that's at a 45 that's a simple cut but I'm gonna I'm gonna set the uh, pattern maker sander to seven degrees and just grind that to the pitch angle and this this machine is amazing it's the Star Trek sander warp drive 
It's a 30 inch disc and a massive, massive uh, shape. So now I can just get my compound shape. Pound, 45 and this I'll show you what that goes to this is an amazing sander made for the pattern making industry this whole machine also has a bobbin sander it is a magnificent piece of equipment thanks for watching Okay guys, I'm standing on top of the tower, which it's actually going to pierce the corner of this roof. And so I projected where it would be and gave it about two inches because I don't want this roof intersecting. This is that side of the taper is going to intersect on that line, and this side of the taper is going to intersect on this line. And that piece I was making was just a solid piece so that I could lay that in here. This surface will be painted. This is the visual side of the whole thing. And so I gotta cut this tail away and I gotta cut this away into a perfect square and then finish it off so that it's all solid. So I got Grandpa saw here. And usually when I'm doing hand work, I like to, uh, you know, I'd like to have a little fade and Grandpa's on the other end of that saw. Even uh, whatever, I know I can usually cut a fairly straight line. So it's, uh, I don't think a wasteful thing to do. Uh, I mean, it might seem absurd to some. To use any hand tools in framing, but there was a time when there just wasn't any other way. And I don't know if this tool makes that. So it's a nice clean cut. We'll see how that lines up just perfectly. So we just need to remove that area. I'll get these better, we'll clamp that up, and that's what's gonna be the visual corner. Thanks for watching. Okay, this is sort of the last piece here, and that'll clad this corner. I'll nail that in, and I'll hand plane off that long edge. I'll show you the finished product. Now, much of this you won't see. Um, you know, because the tower, the tower just comes, the corner of the tower's here. So I want the water to, to, you know, I don't want it to, to slam into the tower. So I'm, I've got, you know, maybe an inch away, maybe further. That allows me to get the shingle on and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the, so I'll paint this out. Uh, you know, all you'll see from this side is a, is a nice uh, corner. And then I've come and I've plumbed back up here. So we'll paint that out crown and uh, the, the other sloping roof will terminate into this so uh, you know it's not always these aren't always anticipated and honestly I missed this uh, because I added width to my top and so you know when you make a bunch of changes you can run into some little things so the important thing is to make uh, good corrections as best you can and this is really at the back corner will you really see it but if you do see it from one of the windows it's going to look very very nice thanks for watching okay pretty productive uh weekend and here is my starting of the ventilation and so we've uh just got enough here to where we can work the interior later but this is the plate this is the time to do this guys now we can cover this and notice that when I've got this out here, it'll it'll drip into the uh, it'll drip into here. Now this might be controversial for some, but uh, this is a technique I've been using for 20 years. Uh, I'm just 
beginning to see building science catch up. Anyway, the uh, whole cost of this in material is about $28 for the roof, and those flimsy garbage things are five bucks each. Would have been $30 just on this side for those garbage little 16th of an inch plastic things that are commonly used. Much better ventilation system. It's a view from the inside. Thanks for watching. Well, another great productive week, and I'm pretty happy with where I got. Ran into a snag. I realized that uh, some of the changes I made during construction, I missed, uh, I missed uh, the room I needed for the tower when I didn't uh, compensate for the overhang of the roof. And these things happen. This is, happens to all of us if we try to explore interesting things. And so, I um, had to cut the corner of the roof out, but I think these sorts of things um, make us pull from the bottom of our, our, you know, our little kit of fixes. And I think what I've got is unique because much of it will never be really seen, although you could get slight glimpses of it from the windows. I'll always know. And so I always think that you do things because you know. And when you know, you can't sleep good if you don't do shit right. At least me, anyway. Uh, so I'm a builder with a conscience, so to speak. Anyway, uh, thanks for following. Thanks for all the comments. I've uh, been getting a lot of interesting feedback. And people seem to be visiting the site uh, to take a look. And so that's pretty fun, too. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this last episode of this week as we start on to another new week. Finally. Finally! Finally, I can roll that with ice shield and protect the highest roof. Well, almost. There's always an almost, right? There's always a few screws, but so make the little boards at the end of that. And uh, I'll roll ice shield, but uh, this is really starting to. Um, well, what is it? What, what is it to remind people of? I'm curious. A lot of things come to my mind. Um, a caboose, um, an ark, many interesting things. What is your take? Love the false beam or ridge? See how those brackets now appear as though the ridge is coming out? Love it. Uh, the knife edge is brilliant. The painting of the um, the painting of the uh, soffit is all done. Venting's all done. So there's a lot that got done. And that's probably what was the most difficult roof. These little shed roofs are fairly easy. Although then I got the gutter one at the back. But uh, I'll take you for a look up around the top. Okay, so here's that correction I made yesterday. It perhaps won't be as bad as I thought, right? It's, it's just that I love things to be perfect uh, images. In other words, perfect geometry. But uh, that is only in the mind perfection. Reality is never perfect. In fact, imperfect things are what are beautiful. And so you can see that those are, those are actually sloped in two directions to mirror the angle of the... Um, of this tower which is considerably tall and so the gap is is even as well but uh loving this uh loving these false ridge beams uh the i did screw 
this area in and this is just like this is really solid and uh, just loving it now. Okay, so I'm tying into the gutter, and this is the joint that uh, goes into the gutter. Now, if you're a woodworker and you're installing trim, you guys need to uh, prime the end grain. Uh, you want your stuff to last, you need to prime your joints. Now, it doesn't take long, but this, um, this is just the longevity that this adds to your work is astounding. Now, let's say you don't have the primer, use wood glue, waterproof. Whatever you do, do not put end grain butting into something. Uh, guaranteed to rot out, I don't care how good the wood is. In the winter time, I'll use polyurethane because it will not cure, but come the warm temperatures it will and it seals the end grain. A very important step. Okay, so this is the area we're trimming the uh, end of the roof and of course where the crown molding will come up into the soffit and we're going to visually see the edge of our roof at one inch so this gets married in now this is our gutter portion and as i said we've primed we've primed primed all of our end grains well use the same product in this case with salt color stain now you'd think that's enough well it isn't what you want to use next between your joints and I'm using clear here only because I'm using a dark stain and if it ever cracks, I don't want white to appear. But if you're painting white, use a white color. It has more solids in it. This is uh, uh, a 35 years siliconized latex. Dimaflex is even better than this stuff. But for this in between the joints, this gives the joint a flexible connection that will not let water in. So the reason you prime is primer sticks to the wood, caulking sticks to primer. You wipe it off after it's water soluble and this will ensure longevity thanks for watching okay so we're on a pretty short day here I'm tied in now it's not an accident that details like this overhang me running the gutter wild and it embutting into the bump out window to make clean details. This is where crown and overhangs terminate cleanly. This isn't a mistake. This is planning. So we're ready for our, we're ready uh, at least in terms of ice shielding this and we'll leave the release paper on the bottom side of this so that when I do the gutter, I can get it underneath and that's gonna be done in ice shield. I finished tying in this side of the tapered um, tower so we now have that completely surrounded and so how so this this corner detail will terminate here the gutter will come past here and the crown terminate inside of here so the gutter will go to here because that wall if you can see comes that's the wall section the little base here will continue around and terminate into the wall. All of those details have to be considered. And of course, now you can see that that taper is gonna clear this little corner of the roof. So I'm pretty happy. We're dry up top. And uh, I should have perhaps the sheathing on the front, but it ran out of material. And I don't get rain till Tuesday. So uh, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I'll go over uh, the structural details at the end of this uh, dry roof section and explain why things were done a certain way. Thanks for watching.